Lil Blanchard. I heard she was due back. Who's she? She worked in the saloon here. She's a nice girl, friend of Ellen's. Oh. Uh-oh. There's bad news. Tad Stewart. I've been wondering why those saddle tramps have been hanging around. They've been waiting for Stewart. Stewart? I thought he was in prison. No, that's Larry. This is his younger brother. He's just as mean. Welcome back, Lil. I don't ask me if I'd meet you. Hello, Johnny. This is my deputy, Cully. Ma'am? This is Mr. Blake, Johnny Ringo. Mr. Blake is on his way to Boston. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, Mr. Blake. I'll you excuse me. What are you doing here, Stuart? I'm visiting, Sheriff. Just visiting. Well, just don't overstay your visit. I think I may stay over for a day or two just to do some sightseeing. Well, that's Velarde's Hotel, Mr. Blake. A friend of mine, Ellen McKay, runs it. I'm sure she could furnish you with a room to your liking. Ma'am, would you like me to escort you to the local saloon? If you'll pardon my using that word in front of a lady. Lady? Where's a lady? I don't see none. When you're in my town, you better act like a gentleman or get out. She's heard worse. You looking for trouble? Why, no, Sheriff. Whatever gave you that idea? I just heard from my brother the other day, you know, the one up in prison. You know, Larry. He sends you all sorts of love. No, I just came to town to welcome Miss Lil back to Villani. I don't want no trouble with nobody. I know you're the big iron around here, and I respect that. I honestly do. Seems guns and good manners just don't go together. You want to see my good manners, you wear a gun. That's enough. Now move out. Why, sure, Sheriff. We don't want to cause you any trouble. We'll see you later, Lil, in the saloon. I wouldn't want you to get in any trouble over me. They shouldn't talk to you like that. You know, Mr. Blake, things are a lot different here than they are in the East. That depends on how far east you go. Miss Blanchard, would you give me the pleasure of taking you to dinner tonight? I, uh, I'd be delighted. And would you be nice enough to show me around the town first? Of course. Nice meeting you, Sheriff. Looks like the East has met the West. Oh, come on now, Mace. That ain't nice. Saying something like that about that gentleman? He's just dressed like one. That don't mean nothing. <laughs> Ignore them, please. For me. Take my arm. <laughs> Please, they're just goading you. You know, I got to get me a pair of gloves like Mr. Fancy Dan there's got, Mace. Ain't they kind of cute? Sure <laughs> thing. I've had just about enough of this, Mr. Stewart. Oh, come on now. Don't go getting your hackles up. We're just fun on you. Ain't that right, Mace? Yeah. Of course, if Mr. Fancy is looking for a little excitement, I'd be glad to oblige. Why don't you leave us alone, Stu? My brother told me to look out for you. He wants me to take good care of you. And that's just what I aim to do. Come on, Mr. Blake. <laughs> Why do you want to keep dogging her like that, Stu? I want to make her life miserable. Getting to run out of Frisco was just the beginning. What about Ringo? What are you gonna do? We'll talk about that up at the hotel.
Clerk, what happened to that old fossil who used to work here? That old fossil just happens to be my uncle. Do you, uh, gentlemen wish rooms? Yeah, we'd like a couple of rooms. First of all, why don't you and I have a little talk? Get acquainted and all that. Oh, don't get cute. I don't appreciate it. You're kind of frisky, aren't you? And don't make me call the sheriff, because he'll take you apart. Oh, come on, Stu. Let's get a room. You know what your brother'd think of this. You got business here. Don't let him down. Don't be telling me what my brother wants. I'll take care of things in my own way. Now, you hear me, and you hear me good. All right, Stu. All right, no offense. You take good care of that sheriff of yours. He might not be around much longer. Now, get us those rooms! You live here in Velarde? I used to. I worked in the saloon. Oh. I'd probably not like the ladies you know in Boston, but... I guess I'm not even what you'd call a lady. I think you are. You've been very nice to me, Mr. Blake. Jeff. Nicer than a man has been to me in a long time. But you don't know anything about me. I know enough to like you. <laughs> I bet I'm the first saloon girl you ever knew. What were you doing in San Francisco? Working. Another saloon. I don't know any other kind of work. I like to cook. But, uh, I, I guess I'm not exactly the chef type. I think you'd make a very pretty chef. I don't understand you, Mr. Blake. I told you I work in a saloon. I'm not all starch petticoats and lace, and I never got past the fifth grade. Doesn't that change your mind about me? Should it? Well, you're either the strangest man I ever met, or the nicest. Did you know that I was asked to leave San Francisco? No. Why? <laughs> How about some nice warm coffee, Lil? I can't thank you enough for asking me back. We're so glad to have you back, honey. Hope you enjoy your dinner. She seems very nice. You're very fortunate to have such good friends. I've known Ellen only oh, oh. You know, for a fancy Dan, you're mighty clumsy. Here, Lil, let me help you. I hope you didn't spill any of that nasty coffee on your pretty duds. I don't think anybody invited you to this table. Now, would you please leave? Well, you're not being at all neighborly, Mr. Fancy Dan. Come on, Jeffrey, let's go. Jeffrey? <laughs> well, Jeffrey hasn't finished his dinner yet. I think he needs a little ketchup. Ketchup? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, sure, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> That's just about enough. I'm telling you, for the last time, I've had enough of all of you. Now, you leave Miss Blanchard alone, or I'm going to have to do something I don't want to. <laughs> Sheriff, you better protect me before this wildcat here pulls me apart. Is he bothering you, Lil? Yes. Oh, now, Sheriff, we were just on our way over to the saloon to have a little nightcap. We stopped to pay our respects to Miss Lil, right? And Mr. Fancy Dan there uh, threatened me and my friends. I'm telling you, Sheriff, you better not let him roam the streets. He's just a bear. You leave him alone, Stuart. Sure, Sheriff. He just scares me to death. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, I have to go change. Got to get to work. Could I see you later at the saloon? No, no, not there. Maybe tomorrow? Fine. Good night, Johnny. Good night. Mr. Blake, you mind if we join you? 
Oh, please do, uh, Mr. Ringo, Cully. Just don't ask me to pour any coffee. It's not my forte. Lil's one of the prettiest girls I've ever seen. She's real taffy. Taffy? Yeah, taffy. Girls, of course. Here, Ron, let me give you a hand with that. Thank you, Cully. It is a little heavy. Will you help me carry them over to Mr. Carter's? Sure. Johnny, I'll see you later. Sheriff, didn't you? You had to cross me just like Lil crossed my brother. Take him to the livery stable and tie and gag him good, and I'll follow you with little Miss Big Mouth. Now, just keep your mouth shut. If you hurt Cully Ringo, I'll kill you. Johnny Ringo will be dead in less than half an hour. All right, now, I'll grab Lil. Make a ruckus. That'll bring Ringo. If his deputy tucked away, that means he'll be alone. Oh, he'll be alone, all right. But that don't mean it's gonna be easy. Ain't been a man yet able to outdraw Ringo. I'm not gonna try to outdraw him. I'm just gonna try to get him worked up enough to wanna fight me. Now, you two go out and wait. When I get him outside, you'll get everybody off the street and it'll be dark. Mace, you'll be across the street. He won't see you. And you get him before he gets a chance to draw. You understand? Got it. All right, let's go. Tell me, Mr. Ringo, what else do you know about Miss Blanchard? Nothing much, except what Ellen told me. Her father died when she was a child, then when she was 15, her mother passed on. She was alone. The saloon keeper and his wife took her in, but she was proud. She wouldn't take charity. So she went to work in the saloon, waiting on tables. I see. I think I can understand now. Working in a saloon doesn't help a girl's reputation, Mr. Blake. But Lil's a fine girl. She told me she was asked to leave San Francisco. Yes, I know. And I think I know why. Some of Tad Stewart's doing. Ellen told me that Stewart followed Lil to San Francisco. Then he spread some ugly stories about her. Why? Some time ago, I brought in his brother, Larry, for killing a man. Lil testified against him. Well, now he's serving a life term in Yuma. And Tad Stewart hates us both. He better stay away from her. Mr. Blake, I think you better keep out of this. This isn't Boston. And Mr. Stewart is, is wearing a gun. I don't need a gun. that low yet. I said we're gonna dance. Now, come on. No. Play something. Play something fast. I said faster.
a strange man, Mr. Blake. Strange how? I don't know. I can't explain it. I've been out of the country for quite some time. What's your business? I was a painter. Oh, an artist? Yes. I painted the King and Queen of Italy, Stonewall Jackson, John Lafitte. I was a portrait painter. But that was a long time ago. Now it seems as if it never happened. Well, you said you were a painter. You're not anymore? No. But what happened? I was married. We had a little boy. They were killed in an avalanche. I'm sorry. We were in the Swiss Alps, climbing. Susan and Richard were very good climbers. I was in the lead. I heard a deafening roar. The whole side of a cliff crumbled down on them. I tried to dig them out with my bare hands, but they were too soft, too weak. I had to get away after that. Had to lose myself or find myself. I've never been able to decide which. Johnny! Oh, Johnny, I've been looking for you. I couldn't find Cully. He's not at the office. Well, what's the trouble, Luke? Well, it's that whelp Stewart. You, you know he's awfully handy with a gun, and, well, no one would step in to help. Well, what's he doing? Oh, he's all liquored up. He's got Lil, and he's dancing her all over the saloon. She's about to pass out. He keeps yelling about this being her last dance. And his two buddies, they've got Sam playing the same tune over and over. I'm going with you. All right. Let her go. Sure, Sheriff. She ain't worth the trouble anyway. Oh. Hey, Stu, here's Fancy Dan. In here with all the men. Sure, she's sweet on him. That's why she didn't want to dance with me. Maybe she'd like to dance with him if they're both fit in a pine box. <laughs> You're just aching for a fight, aren't you, Stuart? Looking for an excuse. My brother's rotting away in a prison because of you and her. I want to see how fast you really are. Let's go outside, unless you want to see somebody get hurt. All right. Johnny? Stuart and his boys bushwhacked me and Ellen. They tied us up in the stable. All right, Stuart. You and your friends are under arrest. Let's go. No, not yet. I'm going to teach this man how to treat a lady. Sheriff? I told you I didn't want any part of this. I didn't want to hurt these men. But the lady's been insulted, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to. This is my fight. Well, Mr. Blake, uh, I'm afraid you can't. <laughs> What's the matter with you? What's the matter with your hand?
Mr. Blake, I've seen and been in some fights in my day, but I've never seen anything like the way you took care of those men. Well, that was the darndest thing I've ever seen. Luke, have some men take care of them. Sure, Johnny. <laughs> It'll be a pleasure. And you better get Doc Bardell. I think they'll need him. Jeff, you were... <clears throat> Mr. Blake, I see why you're wearing gloves now. Yes. I told you, Mr. Ringo, that I was in the Orient. While I was in Japan, I studied the art of karate. Oh, I've heard of karate. One hand is hardened, used as a weapon. Yes. I studied jujitsu first, then I advanced to the higher art of karate. I almost achieved the black belt, the highest symbol of the karate art. But I never mastered the art of inner meditation and restraint. You sure didn't show any restraint mopping up those saddle bums. I uh, promised never to use the art of karate uh, unless to defend myself or someone I loved. for the experienced. Hand must be conditioned, made hard. It's too bad you couldn't use your head in karate. Cully's got the hardest head I know of. <laughs> <laughs> Show me again, Mr. Blake. All right, but this is the last time. The art of karate is a serious matter. It's not for entertainment. It's deadly. Boy, I'll say it's deadly. Tell me, Mr. Blake, uh, what are your plans now? Well, I guess I'll be going back to Boston in a couple of weeks. Perhaps I'll even paint again. Have you finally decided whether to lose yourself or find yourself? A little of both. Excuse me. Yeah, well, don't laugh, buddy. I bet you couldn't do that karate stuff either. Oh, I don't know. Let's see it. Come on. She was due back. Who's she? She worked in the saloon here. She's a nice girl, friend of Ellen's. Oh. Uh-oh. There's bad news. Tad Stewart. 
I've been wondering why those saddle traps have been hanging around. They've been waiting for Stuart. Stuart? I thought he was in prison. No, that's Larry. This is his younger brother. He's just as mean. Welcome back, Lil. I don't ask me if I'd meet you. Hello, Johnny. This is my deputy, Cully. Ma'am? This is Mr. Blake, Johnny Ringo. Mr. Blake is on his way to Boston. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, Mr. Blake. Well, if you excuse me. What are you doing here, Stuart? I'm visiting, Sheriff. Just visiting. Well, just don't overstay your visit. I think I may stay over for a day or two just to do some sightseeing. Well, that's Velarde's Hotel, Mr. Blake. A friend of mine, Ellen McKay, runs it. I'm sure she could furnish you with a room to your liking. Ma'am, would you like me to escort you to the local saloon? If you'll pardon my using that word in front of a lady. Lady? Where's a lady? I don't see none. When you're in my town, you better act like a gentleman or get out. She's heard worse. You looking for trouble? Why, no, Sheriff. Whatever gave you that idea? I just heard from my brother the other day, you know, the one up in prison. You know, Larry. He sends you all sorts of love. No, I just came to town to welcome Miss Lil back to Villani. I don't want no trouble with nobody. I know you're the big iron around here, and I respect that. I honestly do. Seems guns and good manners just don't go together. You want to see my good manners, you wear a gun. That's enough. Now move out. Why, sure, Sheriff. We don't want to cause you any trouble. 